Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my first official Vlogmas video. Technically yesterday was, but yesterday was a normal upload day, so I didn't really consider it like a Vlogmas day, but this is the first day of Vlogmas. So this is also the first experiment in where I'm gonna film my personal videos. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I almost just did it in front of my bookshelves, but then I was like, I need something to kind of differentiate and yeah. So this is what you're gonna get for now. Let me know if you have any ideas. Right now I'm just like in my bedroom in front of my dresser. Should I have put a beauty guru candle burning in the background? I don't know. Is this good? I hope so. I can't get more creative than this. But this is actually going to be an older video of me decluttering my makeup stash two moves ago. So I haven't decluttered since then but I did a whole decluttering process and I'm going to take you with me. So I don't even know what I really say in this video. I don't know if I'm referencing the new apartment, meaning the apartment before this. Just know that for some context. This was filmed back in like maybe April or May-ish. And again, I haven't pared down anything since then. So this is my current collection. So I hope you enjoy this. Hope you like decluttering videos. This is kind of my first gift to you for Vlogmas because I know a lot of you are waiting for the makeup decluttering video, but I have, the, the decluttering footage I have from the old house is just a lot, and now that I've moved past the apartment that I had after that, I'm kind of like so over even trying to edit it, so we'll see. This is kind of like a video from the vaults. So here is the current state of affairs of my vanity. It's a little worse than it would usually be because of just like no time lately. Like I usually don't keep my hair clips here at all for when I'm drying my hair, but I was rushing out the door one day, so they're here. So it's a little bit worse, but like not by much. But that's not even the point of this video because usually like stuff's just off here and everything. Else. Like once you remove all this, I'll show you, it's really fairly organized. So this is my decluttering of my makeup collection. I don't really feel right now that my makeup collection is that bad. I know for a fact I'm gonna get rid of some of the palettes that are in the drawer. This is one of those Ikea vanities that I feel like everybody has. But I'm gonna get rid of some of that stuff and some of my brushes for sure, but the rest of it is like, I have a pretty standard collection. I use the same things over and over, so I don't see myself getting rid of a ton of stuff, but here we go. Also don't mind the background because since I'm packing, there's just like random boxes and stuff. And my laundry, you can see in my mirror, is uh, drying behind me, but that is real life, folks. Okay, so I'm not going to necessarily do this in any kind of order, but I'm going to try to do things kind of in sections. So the first thing I'm going to do is eyeliners, and I don't have very many eyeliners, so that's going to make it fairly easy on me. And the eyeliners I do have, I rarely use. I have this little organizational drawer over here, which has really just been the stuff I don't use drawer. I think that's all of the eyeliners. So first off, I know I'm gonna keep both of these. One is the Kat Von D uh, liquid eyeliner in Trooper, the tattoo liner, and one is the NYX Epic ink liner in black. These are very, very similar. I thought this was running out, and it is running out. This Kat Von D one, it's one I've been using for a while, and I'm kind of, I like it, but I don't love it, whatever. So this is like near empty, but over Christmas, I bought this one because I was certain this was gonna run out, and then it didn't. So I have both, and I've been kind of using them interchangeably. Um, I don't love the NYX one either, so I've yet to find like my ideal liquid liner. I probably like the Kat Von D a little bit more. These are all some Urban Decay eyeliners, pencil liners, that I've had for ever. And I actually got a giant set when I first got into makeup because everyone was using these. Like every beauty guru back in like 2015 had these. And they are beautiful colors. I got this set for like a Christmas one year. They're beautiful. I don't use them. <laughs> I don't use pencil liner really at all. So I know for sure the ones that I have used, you can obviously tell because they're a little bit shorter. So I'll even just do this. Yeah, you can tell which ones I've used. Obviously I've used Perversion, which is the um, black, blackest black that you could possibly use. So I've used that before. And I also used to use Roach a lot, um, but I had a mini of that. So I'm gonna keep that because that's a really nice brown. And then I think I'm also gonna keep Crave, yes, Crave, which is like a gray because those are like good for like smoky and stuff. But all of these I am not going to use. So that's Mars, Twice Baked, which I would keep, but I think Roach is a little bit better for my color. Ultraviolet, Deep End, and Tornado. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I don't use pencil eyeliner ever. And I always kept them because I was like, oh, I'll put them on the lower lash line. I like smoke them out. I don't, I just use shadow to smoke out my lower lash line. So I'm not keeping those. There is this white 
soft coal that I got from Rimmel apparently that I have used, but it's one of those like inner corner ones. Let me even see if I like this look. It's to brighten up the rim and I, it does make your eyes look a little more awake, but if you look at all closely, it's like very obvious that you're wearing a white eyeliner right there. So I don't think I need that and I haven't used that in a while. If I ever want to go for that technique again, I'll just get a flesh colored one. And then this is a Rimmel Scandalize that I again used um, a fair bit of times for kind of like a smoky eye thing, but I think I like the Urban Decay one slightly better. So that's that. Then I have two of the MAC uh, gel eyeliners. These are I think from a limited edition collection. I don't know if they're still limited edition. This is the fluid line. So this is Dark Envy, which is a green, and again, I haven't even, like, do I use this one? Okay, I have. But it's obviously going to be dried out by now, because it's been a really long time, so that's pretty. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, I just don't use gel eyeliner. So I'm going to get rid of that one, and then this one is another one from that same collection. It's Midnight Blues. And again, I use these a little bit. Really pretty, but you can't tell, and I don't really do, like, liquid liner, because you can't see it on me at all. Then we have this Clinique Black Gel Eyeliner, which I've used a lot of, but again, it's probably dried out. It's in true black. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't even remember the last time I used gel liner, and I can just buy a new one if I need to, like one from like Maybelline. This one I'm really torn about because it's an Inglot um, eyeliner gel, AMC eyeliner gel, and when Inglot was really popular back on YouTube, like, years and years ago, I wanted this so bad, and it looks like I've, you know, barely used it. Um... I might keep it, because <laughs> it's not really taking up that much space, and I want to use it. Actually, let's see if I can even do anything effective with this. I don't know, I mean, that's like a, that's a pretty big line um, with that liner brush, but you know what? You only live once. I think I'm going to keep it for a little while, and if I go through my makeup in a little while, because I tend to do pretty regular looks over my makeup, and if I go through my makeup, you know, and I'm like, you still haven't used that, then I'm going to be done. But hopefully the way I'm going to be setting up my makeup at the new apartment, I won't have a lot of these, like, I'll have a drawer, but I won't have all of these, like, random spaces for stuff, so stuff won't get, like, lost in the shuffle. I am going to show my best friend some of these things, see if she wants them, and if she doesn't, then I'm just going to toss them because these are obviously used and I really can't do much with a lot of these things as far as giving them to others or donating because a lot of the donation sites need them to be lightly used or brand new and these are not lightly used or brand new. All of this stuff up here I'm keeping. I'll go through another thing real quick and that is lip liners, which again I don't use a ton of anymore, but they are still some staples and I do like them. So, I have a couple from MAC and the rest pretty much are from NYX. I have this one from Lancome from like forever ago. I got this in high school. It's Le Lipstick Sheer and it is in Sheer Sorbet and it is like a My Lips but, but Better kind of color but it definitely is like a drier one and it, I just don't really wear that often because I have another one that I use a lot. I'm going to use a lip liner and it is this NYX one in Peekaboo Natural. This one is great. This one also is a little bit dried out right now. I need to actually sharpen it. But that is like a My Lips with Better Shades. So I love that one, which I'll be keeping. So that's a keep. Then we have this one, which is one of my other favorites. It's MAC Night Moth. This one I use with some of my darker lipsticks. It's beautiful. You can also use it by itself. I love it. Then we have the NYX Lip Liner in Deep Red. This goes under the red lipsticks. Also beautiful. I love it. It's like a true red. Oh, this one is MAC Beat. It's my first ever lip liner after the Lancome one that I don't really consider mine because I think my mom got it for me. This looks really good under MAC Rebel. Then you always have to have a black lip pencil. This is another one from NYX. And I'm undecided if I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to keep it out. This is a NYX one in hot pink. And I used to wear hot pink lipstick all the time. And I can't remember the last time that I did. So I am definitely going to get rid of this. That one's going in the trash because I'm sure it's not even sanitary anymore. I'm going to keep out that NYX one because I am not sure if I'm keeping any lipsticks that are this color. But if I am, I'll be keeping that. So I have had every intention for years to do a lipstick collection video, but I have a very specific way that I want to do it, and I do not know when or how I would even film that. So I've been keeping some lipsticks around sort of for that purpose, which is kind of against the whole like point of it, because it's like you don't wear this one of these lipsticks anymore, but I do have a giant lipstick collection. These I wear fairly regularly. 
Then I have some bullet lipsticks in here that I've held on to because I never know when I might go back to the bullet lipstick. And who knows, I might, I might. And then I have some over here that I really don't even use anymore. So let's just, let's just grab these for sure. This is one of the fresh sugar lip treatments and I've gone through it, it's like a little sample of it. I keep it in here because I keep most of my lip balms in my bathroom and when I'm doing makeup, sometimes I just wanna have something to put on while I'm doing my makeup to prep my lips. So I'm gonna hold on to this because I have used it recently. But a lot of these are ones that I really haven't used. So I have this Revlon Color Burst Matte Balm, which is a formula that I love. It is in the shade Audacious, and it is like a coral. It just doesn't look that good on my skin. I mean, it looks good on my skin here, but it doesn't look good on like my actual lips. So that's gonna go. This is a Beauty Genius from Anastasia Clear Waterproofing Gel, and I was using this over some OCC lip tars that were not waterproof and were not like smudge resistant at all because the OCC lip tars were not exactly easy to use. So I tried these before liquid lipsticks even really came out when the OCC ones were like the only things you could get and everyone was raving about them. And it worked a little bit, but it didn't work as well as it could have because those products were just not really made for this. So I'm actually gonna just toss that. I thought that maybe I would need that for something, but I definitely don't. This is an OCC lip tar, RIP OCC, because they are now a brand that is closed. This is NSFW, which is a beautiful red. I wanna like put it on my hand, but at the same time I don't because fear. These were just so hard to use. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. But you had to squeeze them out, then put them on a lip brush, and then use the lip brush to spread it. They also feather like super bad, like it's feathering right now. Um, they were just not an easy product to use, but this was an awesome red. But now I have some red liquid lipsticks that work. So I don't need to keep this at all. I'm not even gonna give it to Amanda because she's not gonna be able to use it, and I can tell you that right now. Then I have this ColourPop uh, Ultra Matte Lip Dr. M. I've only worn this a few times. I do like it because I like really unique lipstick shades, but these formulas are just like super, super dry and just like blah, like, and gross. I love this, but now more places have cool lipstick colors, so I don't need to just keep that one just because it's cool. And then there is this that I got, I think, in a sample somewhere. It's a Clinique Chubby Stick, and this is in Mega Melon. And it's nice, it's a nice like natural balmy lip balm stain thing, but I have a ton of natural lip shades now that, like basically I always wear the Completely Nut um, by Lancome if I want a my lips but better, so I don't need this anymore. Let's go in for the bullets, shall we? Because I've had a lot of these for a while. Some of these are my favorites. Oh, can you tell that I like loved MAC lipstick? I still have a soft spot for MAC lipstick, but Man, I went hard for MAC lipstick back when I first got into makeup. So the only non-MAC one in here, well actually these, this is a sample too, so I'll look at that too. But the only non-MAC one that I bought was this NYX one, Lip Smacking Fun Colors in Tea Rose. This is definitely in my list of better. It is almost out, but I've had this for like well over five years. It's like this nice uh, natural kind of pinky shade, but my lips lean a little more brown. And this, and this actually is fairly close to this color, this I Like to Mauve It um, from Lancome. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this shade because I haven't worn it in forever. And it's like a creamy kind of consistency, which is fine, but I just really don't tend to go for it. I go for more of like a satin. I have this Makeup Forever uh, sample. This is an Artist Rouge Cream in C211. Again, kind of a similar situation going on here. Yep, like a mauvey pink, which you only kind of need one of those colors, honestly. I shouldn't talk shit because I know like at least five of these are uh, bright fuchsias, so yeah. So this is a MAC Cream Sheen in Ever Hip. I do really love this. I, I, I'm probably gonna keep this one. This is a nice peach. This looks really pretty. Um, and I have gotten into more natural lip colors in the last like few months, so I think I'll hold on to this and just try to remember that I love it. Oh god, I have a whole story behind this. This is Max Candy Yum Yum. This is the brightest ass fuchsia pink. You probably can't even tell how fuchsia this is. Like, it is neon pink in person. So, <sighs> story time. I used to follow MAC limited edition collections like nobody's business back in like 2014, 2015. And they had a limited edition collection that featured Candy Yum Yum. 
and it was so well loved and everyone snatched it up so quickly because with MAC limited edition collections, like they are so limited that you just can't get your hands on things. It's so annoying, which is why I stopped following them. Everyone was obsessed with this and I missed out on it when this first came out. They then released it permanently in their permanent collection. So I picked it up and I have worn a lot of it. You can definitely tell that it's worn down, but it is a bright fuchsia pink that I don't necessarily feel goes with my aesthetic all the time anymore. But I don't have a lot of fuchsia liquid lipsticks. I have like none. Um, so I'm gonna just put that aside as a maybe. This is definitely a MAC liquid, this is definitely a MAC limited edition one. This is a cream sheen in hibiscus. This I never really loved. I've worn this a few times and it definitely leans more red coral. And this just doesn't look good on my particular skin. So that is something that is gonna go because I really just held on to it because it was like, I have a limited edition collection that I like fought for, blah, and I don't, I don't need to. This is a MAC Amplified in Wash Me Simmer. I think this was also probably a limited edition one. And again, it leans a little more pink than this one did. This one's more red, hibiscus was. This is a little more pink. I did love this when I was wearing it a lot, but of all of them, I love this one the most, which was Everhip. So I don't really see myself wearing this coral. Like, I'm not really a coral person. I used to be. I used to wear sundresses, you know? It's not my aesthetic anymore. Then we have this matte quick sizzle. Oh, here we go. Here's the pinks. So there's that one. Now a lot of these pinks are gonna look the same, but this one is definitely darker than Candy Yum Yum. But I know that I have a lot that look kind of like this. So these are gonna get lined up because I'm only gonna probably keep one of them. So this is another one, uh, Pro Longwear in Dear Diary. This I think is gonna be closer to Candy Yum Yum. Yes, it is. It's a little less neon, but it's neon enough. So this one, I love this one too though. Like I wore these all the time, guys. Like fuchsia lipstick used to be my thing. So I am going to keep Candy Yum Yum just because Candy Yum Yum is like iconic. And this is a shade that you can like find, so. The rest of reds, did I get rid of the rest of my pinks? All right, I made my job like super, super simple. So I'm gonna keep Candy Yum Yum and Quick Sizzle, which are both mattes, and that's just what I tend to love. So these two, they're different enough. And if I ever want to replace them with like a liquid lipstick version, then I can. But for now, I'm going to keep those. And if I want to wear liquid lipstick, then I can. I almost just went to put one of these on just to see what it looks like again. Like, mm, how did it, how did it look? How did it used to look? But I don't need to do that because I'm about to have class later on today and I don't want to look uh, completely crazy in class. Not that it'd be crazy to wear fuchsia lipstick because I totally would, but I don't plan on wearing any other makeup, so it wouldn't really go. Then we have some of the darker colors. So this one is Run Runaway Red. I never know if it's Runway or Runaway. So that is this like deep red, another favorite of mine, which I'm not sure I'm going to keep because I have other red lipsticks. This is Rebel, which I used to love. There you go. You can definitely wear that as more of a stain and you can wear that more like layered up. But I feel it does start to get a little bit gummy when you start to layer it up. So I might not end up keeping this, which like hurts me because this is one of my first like really deep lipsticks. But you can already see like it kind of, it's probably because it's older because I've had this for like years and years and years, but it starts to kind of gum as you layer it, so I don't think I'm gonna keep that one necessarily. And then we have Max Ruby Woo, which is just like iconic. But the uh, retro mattes are kind of hard to wear. I might need to get a replacement for this too because it's just like, it, it's, it goes on kind of bleh. But this is iconic and I, I won't get rid of it. So, you know, that's just that. But I might get rid of Runaway Red. So I have this, which this is not a brand that I buy from anymore, so we're not even gonna talk about it. But it is a brand I'm keeping until I run out of it. And that is the red that I wear from this brand. Um, all right. So they're not similar. They also have this matte balm. Oh, I could probably get rid of the matte balm and keep Ruby Woo. The matte balm is like more moisturizing. <laughs> hmm. I think I'm gonna get rid of the matte balm because if I go for anything, I'm gonna go for either the liquid lipstick or Ruby Woo. So I'm gonna do that, get rid of that, and get rid of Runaway Red because those are the reds that I go for. I also have this red one that was a gift this year from somebody who heard me talking about wanting this color but not wanting to buy it, so they bought it for me, and I was like, that is not the point. But 
that is that. So it kind of, I already have my different scopes of red covered with those three. So I don't need any of those. So these are the bullets that I'm keeping. That is the Cream Sheen and Ever Hip, Matte Quick Sizzle, Matte Candy Yum Yum, and Retro Matte Ruby Woo. So I do still love my matte lipsticks. And because I am keeping the one um, neon, I will probably end up keeping this as a lip liner. Although, it doesn't really go, right? But I'll have to try it and like layer it and see if maybe it will because I know it is useful to have those lip liners with those crazier colors. Now what sucks is I have this organizational thing for all of my bullets and I don't have this many bullets anymore. Like I have four, so I might need to cut down and see if I can find like a half size for this because I really have nothing else to put in this and I have this one for all of my liquid lipsticks which works way better. So I have to see if I want to store these some other way. I want to make sure that I store them in a way that I can see all of them but I don't, I don't have this many um, bullet lipsticks and I don't see myself getting many more. Um, I can see myself maybe getting this many more but not all of this. I'm definitely a liquid lipstick person for sure. Much more so. And even just like these. But I guess these could go in there. Yeah. Maybe I can keep it and put those in there if I want to. So we'll see. But I'm probably going to try to find something a little bit smaller than this. So these are the bullets and miscellaneous lip colors that are going. I haven't gotten to my liquid lipsticks. But I know I'm going to keep more of those anyway. I hope you don't mind the lighting change. But it started to get a little bit dark because it's been kind of raining on and off today. So I figured that I should pull out the lights. So... Sorry, but you should probably be able to see a little bit better now. Now I'll go through all of the liquid lipsticks. And like I said before, most of these I'll keep because most of these I do wear. But I know for a fact some of them I need to just get rid of because they're kind of past their date. And you can see that I have some brand loyalty and ones that I really like. But again, like I mentioned earlier, some of these are brands that I no longer wear, but these are just all ones that I bought before are in the one instance was gifted to me recently. But the grand majority of these I have worn recently. So this one I'm definitely keeping, which is Lime Crimes Raven. This one I'm definitely keeping, which is Lime Crimes Jinx. They are ones that I'll replace when they do eventually run out. This one I'm keeping, which is Lime Crimes Salem. This one I'm not going to keep. This actually came in a bundle with Raven and Jinx, and this is Lime Crimes Moonstone. And this is a very, very light lavender, and man, does this not look good on me. Like, I'm okay with funky shades, but this is just a shade that doesn't really work that well for me. And it is one that I've tried layering and trying to do like an ombre lip, and it just doesn't work. So I'm going to be getting rid of that one. This is Jeffree Star Abused, which I have worn recently. These are the Jeffree Star ones I just recently showed, so it's Unicorn Blood and Poinsettia. Those I am keeping. So these are also two Jeffree Star ones and they look very similar. So one is Celebrity Skin and one is Mannequin. They are both very much nudes, but they are, they, they are different. So this is Celebrity Skin. This is Mannequin. Celebrity Skin is more of a nude. My lips look better. Mannequin is a little bit lighter. I'm going to hold both of those and then compare them to some other shades that I have from other brands. So this is Anastasia Lovely. I know this is more pink, but I'm just going to see how it compares next to these. Oh yeah, that's like a straight up pink. Uh, this is my first liquid lipstick I ever bought. Still really like it. Then we have Anastasia Crush, which is one that I wear pretty regularly. And this is a My Lips Bit Better for me, definitely, because it's a little more of a brownie pink. But again, it doesn't completely like it. They're not dupes, so who knows? I might end up keeping both of them. This is Kat Von D Haze One. This is a limited edition shade, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be different than all of them. Yeah, this is darker. So can't say I didn't try to see if I have a dupe in my collection. I know that both of these. This is Haze Two from Kat Von D, and that definitely is way more gray. So this is Haze One, Haze Two. I just got these uh, this last fall. I love both of them. I do have these ColourPop shades that might be dupes for them, but these are gross and separated. ColourPop is nice and cheap. I haven't bought it in years, but they separate like the Dickens and they dry out real nasty. These are the matte ones. I have yet to try the satins because they came out after I stopped buying ColourPop. Oh, that's almost like, that kind of stinks too. It has like a, 
like a white Audi, no, like an Elmer's glue smell to it. Yeah, I'm definitely getting rid of these, but I kind of knew I was going to. So that is Trap, which I do love, but I haven't worn that in a long time. This one is definitely, yeah, coming apart. This is Kapow. This is more of like a stone type shade. Yeah, I like it, but I would just have to get a replacement, and I haven't even reached for this in a very, very long time. And they're really cheap, so I don't feel bad getting rid of those at all. Also from ColourPop, I have Tool. I love this. This is the shade that I wore to my first chemo, actually, like a power shade. But again, it's very like, oh, it's so goopy right now and gross. Oh, I do not reach for this at all anymore. Yeah, they have a weird, ugh, like, chemical smell to them. Gross. This is, oh my gosh, this is like completely destroyed. This is Anastasia Sad Girl. I might need to actually replace this because I do love this, but the last time I wore it, it felt kind of off. But this is beautiful. It's like a purpley burgundy and it has like gold glitter pieces in it. I love this, but it started to really feather really bad the last time that I wore it. <sighs> do I throw it out now or do I just remind myself to get it later? I might throw it out now. This is my second liquid lipstick that I ever bought was this one, but this is kind of destroyed and it's definitely started to kind of, yeah, it doesn't look as good anymore. I'm going to get rid of that one. And then this is Anastasia Retro Coral, very summery, but you know how I've been feeling about corals lately. Yeah, this is too neon for me. Girl, what were you thinking when you bought this? I just loved it because like it was summer at the time and yeah, like I said, I was probably still wearing sundresses, but that is that one just doesn't look good on me personally. So I'm keeping these two. They're different enough and they are nudes, but I don't need any more. Like these are all the nudes that I need. Besides the matte shakers, which are more like everyday work uh, lipsticks that I wear because they fade off really naturally. I really don't wear like lipsticks to work because they fade off all patchy and crap. But those are those. So doing those. Did I show this one? I don't think I did. This is Kat Von D Dagger. This is fun. I still wear this. It's like a blue. I got this over the fall. It's like a blue gray. Looks awesome. Then another favorite of mine from Kat Von D is Kat Von D Witches. This is my black liquid lipstick. Oh, it looks so good. I love it. Then we have Nars Train Bleu. This is awesome and I will keep it even though it's like the only shade that is not a liquid lipstick that I'm keeping besides a couple bullets, but this is beautiful. I actually really like these formulas. I should look into more of them, but that kind of makes up for me losing MAC Rebel because that is just, oh, it's just beautiful and I love it and it's a better formulation anyway. This is another Mylis with Better shade. It's the Revlon Color Burst Matte Balm in Sultry. I wore this a lot. I wore this a lot when I first started my channel. Look, and it's like almost empty. How much do I even have left of this? Oh, a lot, apparently. But, yeah, this is like a My List But Better shade. But I really don't reach for it anymore. Hmm. I think I'm gonna let this one go. Because I can always get it from the drugstore, like, whenever if I want to. I just don't reach for it. Again, I reach for these guys a little bit more. But as far as balms, they are a fun time. Eh. Actually, I like that enough to keep it for, uh, like, a fall balmy shade. And again, it's a little more moisturizing if my lips are kind of, like, screaming at me. This is a sample that I got. It's a Bare Minerals um, Infamous Matte. And I don't know if that's the shade name, but um, this is what it looks like. It's a, again, like, my list, but better. But if I want to, I'd reach for one of these that I already own and love. This is really beautiful, and it smells like chocolate but I don't reach for it and I haven't reached for it and it does, doesn't fit very well in this container so like I have to just like fish for it but it is a pretty shade if you're looking for a liquid lipstick and it's a little more of like a satiny but it's just not one that I reach for so those are all the liquid lipsticks I actually ended up getting rid of more than I thought I would but the ones that I'm getting rid of I mostly knew I was getting rid of like those ColourPop ones that I know had gone off like there's no reason to keep those Okay, now we're gonna get into random eyeshadow. Now, these again are locked away in this organization thing that I don't use because it's hiding behind my other palettes. So I think I'm gonna get rid of all of these because they're just not things that I reach for, even though I do kind of think they're so beautiful. So this is a L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in Midnight Blue, as well as Golden Sage. I've never really used these a ton, but they are really pretty. But I think these formulas are really good for some of the more neutral shades, and you just use them as like one shade all over your lid. But I have not reached for these since the last time I did a clean out, and I told myself I was going to, and I didn't. So those are going away. This is a Fierne Pixie Epoxy. This is for, it's like a primer for, um, 
powder eyeshadows. So you kind of put a little bit of that down and then especially their eyeshadows are um, powder like this and you it sticks to them if you use that and that was something that I like craved because back when I was on a bunch of like makeup forums in 2015 everyone said to use them but yeah I don't even obviously know how to use it that well because I think I should have let it dry a little bit more but it's supposed to give it more of like a sticky effect and then like make it more duochrome and you can build it up and everything blah 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 but I just haven't really needed it because I don't really use shades like that anymore so yeah but this is a bare mineral shade I used to use a lot more of it's a bare minerals eye color and heart I think I actually got this again in like a sampler thing and this is really pretty but now there's so many of these like warm shades that I never reach for this one this is MAC Heritage Rouge, and this is, like, really pretty. Okay, I might keep this because it's stunning, but I'm going to have to put it in with everything else. So this is one of their pigments, and I hunted high and low for this because of a look that somebody on a makeup form that I followed back in the day did with this. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm keeping this. I'm sorry. I think I, I probably shouldn't, but, like, do you guys see? Like, it might not look as, like, beautiful on camera, but, like, let me tell you, it is... And it has like a, not quite duochrome but it just looks so multi-dimensional and beautiful. So I'm keeping this. I also have fond memories of it. And I don't even know if MAC makes this anymore. So my luck, I'd get rid of it and they don't make it anymore and then I'd be like devastated. But I'm going to keep this in a different spot because I think I might get rid of this um, organizational thing. We will see. I don't need to wipe it off right now. Okay. Then we have NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil and Milk. This is for more of the bold eyeshadow looks and you use it as a primer and then it shows up better. So this still works, it's not dried out. I will keep this, but I also might be storing it elsewhere so I'll keep it over here. Now we're gonna do the eyeshadow palettes. So I have one hiding over here, but I actually know it's there, so that's for good reason. But I am gonna grab that. Right, so that's a sugar pill. I have these three that I'm not even gonna bother to grab. So these are my like some of my everyday palettes. This is the Kat Von D Metal Matte. It was limited edition. It's beautiful. I use it all the freaking time. Um, so I'm keeping that over here because I'm not decluttering that. This is the Sugar Pill Pro Palette. Oh, it's beautiful. I don't use it all the time, but I love it. And it's for bright shades, obviously. I use the red, the black, and the purple a lot, and the white. And not so much the other ones. They, those go only like with each other for really crazy looks, but I love this and I will keep this forever and use it for more colorful looks. This is also my first sugar pill palette and this was the, what, Heartbreaker? Yeah, this is the Heartbreaker palette. So I love these. I've used these in multiple looks. Again, I don't use all the time, but I'm going to keep it. Again, I might keep it elsewhere. All right, so I have some palettes in here that I know I'm going to get rid of. Alright, these are all of my eyeshadow palettes, which I actually do fairly well with. So, this is my Z palette that I created. These are the only two MAC eyeshadows. The rest are, these are uh, Makeup Geek and these are Inglot. So, I actually don't use all of these, but I use these guys fairly regularly. I haven't really used a ton of these. I've used these and I, 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 haven't, I don't think I've touched these. I honestly don't even think I've touched these because I use the sugar pill way more. So I might get rid of these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to consolidate it with the MAC one that I have. So I have a MAC palette from back in the day and I have some shadows in here that I don't use. So these are again some from some limited edition collections and I'm either going to move them into here and see if I use them more, but I probably won't. And I'm going to get rid of the rest of them. Let me just like swatch some of them right now. I can't even tell you what the shades are because again, it doesn't matter. They're limited edition. You can't get your hands on them. That is a nice pretty green. That's a nice green. I think this one might be Temptalia's shade that she made with MAC. This is a nice green. But again, they're not super pigmented. These are from the days before like, you know, super, super, super pigmented eyeshadows were like a thing. Can you even see these? Yeah, you can barely see them because they're just not that pigmented. I think I'm probably going to get rid of all of these because I don't see myself wearing them. I don't wear a lot of green and blue looks outside of my sugar pill ones, and I have the sugar pill colors for those. So, these are going to go completely. But the rest of these, 
I'm gonna decide kind of what to do with. Again, I might show my friend Amanda some of these and see if she wants some of them, and then the rest I'll just kind of like push over and make it into a pretty palette of single eyeshadows, but I'm gonna keep these. Then I have the original Naked and the Naked 2. These I use on a weekly basis. I use some of these shades for work. I don't use the whole palette, but I use certain shades. So in here I use Naked, Buck, and Toasted quite a lot. I actually use Toasted a lot as just an all over shade almost all the time. I also use Smog pretty regularly as well. I used to use in this, um, this one down here, which was Gunmetal, all the time when I first got it, but now I use some of these shades as more like just all over shades. So I'm definitely keeping this because I use it on a regular basis. And then I also use the Naked 2 pretty regularly. I use Taupe as a transition shade all the time. And then I use Busted in the uh, crease and in the outer V, and then I use Foxy as a uh, like highlighter shade. But I also dip into some of these. Again, I used to use Pistol and Velvet a lot, now I don't like it all, but these are all things that I use. And I've panned quite a few of them, so yeah. Now, this Tarte Tartlet palette, I used to use a lot when I first got it. Now I feel like this can just be, this can just go because these are all shades that I have in other palettes and these aren't even that good anyway. I was using it for a while at the gym. I was packing this in my gym bag and then using this as like my just kind of go to throw it on after the gym to go to work. But they don't really blend that well. They're kind of patchy and I have other palettes that work really well for these. So this is gonna go. These are two of the Urban Decay Vice palettes. So this is the original Vice and then the Vice 2. I used to use these a lot as well. You can actually see that I made a giant dent. This one just fell out so I didn't use that one but I used Anonymous and Laced a lot as um, this is a transition shade that I used a lot. I also used Rapture quite a bit and Black Market, but otherwise I didn't use the rest of this palette a ton and I don't uh, really dip into this at all anymore. It's been in the drawer since my last declutter, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. Then the Vice 2 is even more that way. I used Habit and Rewind quite a bit and derailed as well. A little bit of smoke out, but otherwise didn't really use this palette a ton. A lot of these shades are completely untouched and I do not reach for it at all. Oh, Jaclyn Hill again. That's another one I'm keeping. The Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette I recently got and I really like it. I got it for Christmas and I reach for it often. So, um, but between that, the Sugar Pill and the Kat Von D, I find those way more inspiring for fun looks than any of the Vice 2 ones, so I'm not gonna keep that. This is a funny palette. So this is the Tarte True Blood palette. And if any of you guys remember this, you probably don't, but yeah, oh, I, I cracked the mirror a long time ago on that. But this is the Tarte True Blood palette. It's ugh, not good. I only really use this brown. This is when I first got into makeup and I also love True Blood. So I've kept this just because it's kind of like, why wouldn't I keep it? But I'm also like, what? Like I never use this. The looks never really worked. The shades don't really work together. There really isn't a ton of cohesion to it. They're powdery. A lot of them are very glittery and don't stay on the eyes. It's just a mess. And this was before Tarte even got really popular. So they didn't have good eyeshadows really at all. But I got it. And so that's that's them. Some of the shades are like the light, fairy, waitress, werewolf, glamour me, telepath, the true death, like bye you. Ugh, shut up. And then it has a little like open after dark and in here was, oh, this I never used, but I think there was maybe a brush in here and then this was their, doo -doo -doo. oh, lights, camera, lashes. This is gonna be dried out as shit. Yeah, it definitely is. I might've tried that. And then this is a, oh yeah, it's uh, their lifted eye primer, which is again, probably gonna be dried out. Oh, it's not, it still works. But I didn't use either of these, but these are the, the, but these are the packaging and everything for it. So I'm tempted to see if like anybody that collects makeup would want this, but at the same time, it's like, it's not in good condition. Like I obviously used like the eyeliner or whatever that was here, the brush, I don't even know. And it's all like powdery and gross and this is broken. So yeah, I'm definitely getting rid of these four palettes and the MAC ones. So five palettes total are leaving me. And I've known, I've known these need to leave me they aren't doing me any good. They are not doing me any service. And the other ones I use regularly. So for right now I'm gonna put these back, but I 
probably gonna get another organizer like this for them, possibly. Um, I also just like know they're down here, so it's fine. I'm actually gonna put this guy back with them as well. But yeah, I think I'll probably get something like this. Actually, I might use this one. You guys can't see, but I have one just full of like a couple random things for no reason. So I'm probably gonna clean that out and use it for those. So yeah, is it time to get into this part of the the video? Yeah, probably. Okay. So let's try some random face products. Those drawers are definitely not coming with me because they don't serve any purpose. These are my regularly used face products down here. So these are not going to bother to really take out. They're the IT CC Cream and the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow. Um, the Pro Glow is in 201. The CC Cream is in, I think, like Fair. Yeah, and Fair. And then I have the Meow Cosmetics Flawless Finish Foundation. It's a mineral foundation. This is in... Uh, Inquisitive Korot, and then I have a MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Scapade. This is a nice natural kind of everyday highlighter. I have the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. This I use to set my liquid foundation. I have a Jeffree Star highlighter, which again, don't buy, blah, blah, blah. And this is a Skin Frost and Ice Cold. It is blinding, but I use it as like a very, very small like tip highlighter. I have these two blushes, which I don't really use blush, but I want to. So I'm going to actually take those out and see if I want to keep those for sure. Oh, and then I have this. Um, I didn't even take this out because I love this and I would never get rid of it. It's the um, Melt Cosmetics Rust Stack. So it's all these like rusty shades. It's beautiful and perfect. So I would never get rid of that. Oh my god. These are some random things that I've had forever. So this is super sad. It's from Arbor Rouge Cosmetics. It was an Etsy brand, and this is their Matte Mineral Foundation in Cream. I still have a little bit of this left, so I might actually just use this in sadness and for over the next couple of days. But this was an indie company, and she closed down, and I loved this foundation. It was the perfect match for me. Like, even my Inquisitive Cora isn't, like, it's almost perfect. Like, you can't even really tell. This was an exact match for me, and I loved it, and it was the best. So I have a bunch of, like, these are mostly blushes and, like, bronzers and stuff. So I have this bronzer. It's the NYC uh, bronzer in Smooth Skin Bronzer in Sunny. And this is really good for fair-skinned people. But I never wear bronzer, really, you know? Oh, I just gouged that with my fingernail. This is actually going to go because I don't remember the last time I even used bronzer. I do have this shade that kind of works for a contour or bronzer. It's a MAC Powder Blush in Harmony. It's a matte blush, and this is kind of a fun neutral blush. Yeah, I kind of like that. And that works as a bronzer if need be, so I'll be keeping that on. I need to try to use that more often. Let me see if I can just pop that on my cheeks right now. I have no foundation on or anything. I just feel like this is really pretty and I want to use it. Desperately want to be a blush person, but I always feel like it highlights texture on my skin. But I'm going to try to keep that. This is a Tarte blush in Blistful. I actually don't think I'm going to keep this because it's a, like, yeah, it's a pink pink. I feel like, if anything, I should use Tarte Exposed. That's Blistful if you can see it at all. But this is not going to work for me. This is my first ever blush. It's a Lancome Blush Subtil in Cedar Rose. Now, this is one that I could probably get behind. Oh, that is so subtle. Yeah, that's a subtle, like, brownie pink. You can probably barely see it because I'm not, like, super swatching it. This is really old, but it still smells fine. It has like that powdery old Lancome smell. I love Lancome. I have a soft spot for it. This is the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Whisper of Guilt. This was a cult product as well. It's more of a bronzy highlight, like a beach highlight. Not that I go to the beach. And then we have this little NYX. It's actually an eyeshadow in True Taupe. Um, this is kind of a stand-in for the Taupe NYX blush that I would use as a contour shade. You can kind of see it's a very like cool leaning color. So I'm gonna keep that for if I wear this contour. This is a little uh, Cover FX highlighter drop sample that I got. Um, but I don't use liquid highlighter, man. These are just, yeah, and these are just too intense for me. Like, I don't, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful, but like, I'm not gonna reach for that because I put the littlest dot on and like, I'm glowing from space and I just, yeah, I, I can't. We only have a little bit left to go and this is just some like random stuff that I can declutter in here. Oh, I have some extra paper towels. So I can use this one. That was smart of me. So these are my like everyday essentials, but there is a couple things in here that I do not use anymore because they are not everyday essentials. We have this MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. I was using this a lot more when I was sick 
to kind of cover up my like eyelid veins. This is getting really dried out though, so I'm probably gonna get rid of this. And I actually discovered during one of the times that my camera died that I have a bunch of back to Mac stuff that I'm gonna use. So that's gonna go in with the back to Mac stuff and I can get myself one lipstick from Mac. And then we have the Anastasia Dip Brow Brow Pomade in Taupe. And this is something that I also used a lot when I was sick and I barely had any brows, but I don't really need it anymore. I don't use Dip Brow. So I think I'll be getting rid of this, but everything else is staying because I love it. But then we have just some like random shit to get rid of, yeah? So we have this thing of all nighter, which I just used to refill my smaller all nighter, so I'll keep that. We have this Urban Decay uh, Grindhouse uh, sharpener, which I will keep. I'm going to throw away this little thing that's kind of like a cuticle pusher plus lash thing. I don't even know what that is. Like, why would you combine those two things? And then we have another sample of Mineral Veil, which I will hold on to. But I'm going to put this just like out because I want to stick, if I can, the eyeshadow palettes in here. Yes, perfect. So I am going to get one more of these though, because I think that would work really well. And I can put that back over here for some of these miscellaneous face items. But for right now, I'll stick the miscellaneous face in with my other face things so that I don't forget about them. Don't you forget about me. That, and I can stick, this is my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. It's in porcelain. I'm not sure if this works for me because this might break me out, but it might just be because of stress. So I'm going to hold on to this for a little while longer and see. I'll do the brushes next because I have these brushes and some of these brushes, which are actually my like second tier brushes. So that should tell you something. Okay. So, oh, it's brush. so I tend to use a beauty blender for a lot of stuff, but brushes are still obviously super important. So these have become sort of my like less used second tier brushes, but I still will sometimes like reintegrate them. So I still wanna look at some of those as possible keeps. I almost feel as though brushes are one of my like favorite categories of makeup. I just find the whole like tools so fun and great. What is that tape doing on there? But I just really like getting them and I like like luxurious brushes and stuff like that. So I actually have a lot of fairly inexpensive ones, but I just like like shopping for brushes. So I just wanted to comment that when I do move, I wanna get different containers for things. I don't love these. And now that I'm especially like paring things down, I don't love them. They're just things that I got from Target that are um, desk organizers. But I think what I'm gonna end up doing is, and this is very typical, like beauty gurus do this, but I really like the look of it. And I'm gonna like the look of it, I think in the new apartment as well, is using candle jars that have been cleaned out that are like clear glass and fill them with these beads because I have these beads. They're um, from like a craft store for uh, flower arrangements people use them for. So um, I'm gonna use those empty candle jars with the label taken off with the beads to store my brushes after I get some of those. So I'm actually in the process of burning some of those down before the move, so I don't have to move them. So I'm gonna then use them for this, which is gonna be fantastic. So. First things first, this guy. This is one of my first MAC brushes, and it's not dirty, it's bleached. So I have a window right here that doesn't have any shades on it, so it has bleached the bristles in this brush. And I actually don't use this brush anymore, this kind of kabuki, so I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm actually gonna put this in my back to MAC bag, because I'm not sure if I'll take it back, but hopefully they will, I don't know. This is a Real Techniques stippling brush, and I'm going to keep this because I sometimes will just switch between brushes for foundation. So like right now I'm using a beauty blender like almost exclusively, but I used to use a stippling brush a lot, and I might start using this for like my tinted moisturizer, just to get, like, I just find that when I was using my tinted moisturizer that it doesn't apply as nicely with just fingers, so I feel like something like this to buff it out might be a really good idea, because I don't want to use a beauty blender because it might soak up too much product on an already light-covered product. So even if I don't keep the Laura Mercier one that I showed earlier, I still want to use some kind of tinted moisturizer, and I might use the stippling brush for that. So I'm going to keep this for now. This is also a Real Techniques brush. This is a contour brush. I don't use this really for contour. I do sometimes, or I did when I was like, I never really contour my face anyway. But I actually use this for concealer under my eyes sometimes. So I do plan on keeping this as well. I like it. This is one of my first foundation brushes ever. This is a Lancome. It just says Lancome 2, but it's one of those flat paddle brushes. And I just heard today when I'm filming this in a video about like the glass skin trend that some people say to use these like paddle brushes for some of your like more light coverage foundations. So I'm gonna keep that. I'm torn about this Real Techniques. This is one of the Real Techniques metal collection, which has been discontinued, which I loved, but because they're just like so pretty. It's a 300 brush. This is more of a blush brush, 
but I actually prefer this blush brush, which is a fluffier one. I don't like a really like controlled blush like this one does. I like more of this like really fluffy kind of just like wash of color. This is a little bit too packed on. So I haven't had a ton of success with this one. So I think I'm gonna actually get rid of this one. This one I'm obviously gonna keep. This is a Real Techniques contour brush too. It's a sculpting brush. And this is an angled brush, and I've never used this for contour. I originally got this for blush, and again, it was it's too heavy for blush placement for me. So I'm going to get rid of this one as well. Let's just finish up the Real Techniques brushes. So I have these two, which are regular in my collection. This is a buffing brush, and this is the powder brush, I think. Yeah, powder brush. So I use this one for powder foundation. I use this one for setting powder. So these are regular, and they're going back in the regular box container. Then I have this little one, which is a pointed foundation brush. I will use this sometimes for um, like under the eyes. Again, for like powder foundation, it's like a pointed flat brush. And then this one is a regular one for sure. This is the setting brush. I use this for powder highlighter and I use that again almost daily. Then we have this little Anastasia. It says it's a 12, but it's a dual sided brush. So it has a little spoolie on the end and it has the one for cream products on the end. I'm going to keep this because I think it's a useful brush to have, but I don't really use it because I don't use the Anastasia Dip Brow anymore as I previously discussed. But I think I'm going to keep this as a potential angle brush because I'm not going to keep my other angle brushes. I think I have two, maybe I just have one. Oh no, I have two, it's right there. So I have two angle brushes that are basically the same. They're kind of gotten a little fluffy. One is from Eco Tools, one is from Lancome and is one of my like original ang angled eyeliner brushes. And I haven't used these in a while. This one you can tell I think still has like red powder on it. I used this to draw my brows when I was wearing a red wig when I was sick. So I don't really use these anymore. You can tell that they have bit of a uh, fatter, denser uh, head to them, so it doesn't really draw very precise lines. So if anything, if I ever use cream product again, I'm going to use that Anastasia one. This is the oldest brush in my collection. This is a Merle Norman brush. If you and your moms ever use that, it's an eye contour brush. It's one of the first brushes I ever had before I even knew how to do makeup. Uh, it's scratchy. It's not fun. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Then I have a couple of the eyeliner brushes for, again, cream eyeliner products. So I'm going to keep this one. This is the Sigma Small Eyeliner Brush. It's an E10. This one is a little bit um, skinnier of a point on it. This one is a Sonia Kashuk one, and it doesn't actually say, yeah, there's no name to it, but it's just their um, angled brush, and look at how like, flayed it is. Can you see? Yeah, it's like splayed out. It's not effective at this point. Oh, I almost put that in the bad pile. I am so sorry. Go back where you belong. Okay, I do have one. Oh, no, I have two. See, look at this. So I have two lip brushes. And one is a Real Techniques one that I like obviously haven't cleaned, and one is a OCC. So this is one that I use for lip tars. I'm going to keep the OCC one because I think it's a little bit in better shape. But if I ever want to use um, any of my bullets, my bullet lipsticks, and use this to paint it on, I think that's a good thing to have around. You can also double them as concealer brushes. And most of these I use on a fairly regular basis, so all of these I'm going to pretty much keep. Between the dip brow and these guys, these are all going. So I want to get one more container like this from the container store and put that here, and then that'll hold everything else. Oh, I forgot to show you. I have a bunch of lashes, but I'm keeping all of them. So I have some individual lashes. I have some lashes from House of Lashes. Yeah, these are all lashes that I use. These are the ones that I use the most, though. They are the Ardell Demi Wispies. They're my favorite. So this is the finished product of everything for now. And I am going to get rid of this little organizer. This is the organizer that I was talking about. There's nothing in it anymore. And I'm going to get rid of it because it looks kind of tacky anyway and I have nothing else to store in it. So now I've officially gotten rid of these two containers because months ago I decluttered enough to get rid of one of these. And now I've gotten rid of both of them. And this is all the stuff that I am getting rid of. And here is my current collection of what it looks like at the new place and pared down and everything. And I really like it and I like how what I have and how much I have and I use everything and it makes me happy. So I hope you enjoyed my makeup decluttering process. Comment below, let me know if you've decluttered your makeup stash, if there's any things that you've discovered that you love a lot since decluttering your makeup stash. I didn't discover any new things, I just kept all the things that I knew that I liked and used a lot, so. Comment down below and let me know if there's any things that you really enjoy. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.